Hi everyone, my name is Mickey Hudson and welcome today to today's Facebook Live. Um, this is Who's Corner Viking and today I'm going to be talking all about elastic. So as I usually do, I'll give you a few minutes to come in and get settled. Um, you may want to grab a pen and paper too. I have some information that you may want to jot down. Um, I want to thank the behind the scenes crew, uh, Thomas, Meredith and Ryan. And uh, they are always so helpful to me. So I always like to say hi. Um, and I do want to remind you once again, do not click on anything um, that does not come from us. And you will know it is not from us if they ask for any personal information or if they ask for money. These Facebook Lives are free to you and we never ask for anything. So um, once again, if you just come in, my name is Mickey Hudson, and today's Husqvarna Viking uh, Facebook Live is going to be on Elastic. So I hope you guys are excited um, because this is actually quite an interesting topic. It doesn't seem like it would be, but when it comes to Elastic, there is a variety of different types out there. Uh, many of us are using the wrong types of Elastic for the wrong projects. Um, so I'm hoping to clarify, clarify some of that, plus uh, share with you some interesting ways that you can add elastic to uh, a project. Um, I am going to be working today with the Husqvarna Viking Designer uh, Epic 2 um, because that's the one I have. However, all of these techniques can be done on a sewing machine from your basic emerald on up. So uh, there's nothing exclusive to the top of the line. I just happen to have one. Um, I will also be using the serger. And I, I'm sad to say that I do not have the beautiful new Amber Air S600 yet. Um, I still do have the very nice uh, Amber Air 400. Uh, so I will be using that. Um, but I will be referencing when a cover hem is um, applicable as well, because it could be it could be done this way. It could be done on a sewing machine. Um, it could be done on with a cover hem as well. So we'll be talking about all of that stuff today. But first, I want to start with elastic because there are a variety of types out there and they some of them can seem very similar and some of them can be very different and when do i use what for when um, can also be um, quite confusing so i'm going to start with ela um excuse me braided elastic now braided elastic for those of you taking notes this is one you want to write down Braided elastic is the type of elastic that will stretch as you sew. So it is not ideal for stitching through. Um, it is great for it is great for um, using in casings. So if you've made a casing and you want to feed this through, this is great. Uh, but this does not lend itself well to being stitched over. So what I mean is when you stretch it, it gets skinny. And so when you stitch on this or serge on this, it actually causes the, the elastic to lose its elasticity. So I'm going to get stuck on that word. You just watch. So this is great if you're going to be threading the elastic through a casing and not for stitching. Then there is the knit uh, elastic. And knit elastic, as you will see, does not stretch or shrink when you stretch. It stays the same all the way, even when it's stretched. So this is ideal for stitching directly to your project. Um, this is one of those cases that uh, if you are going to stitch to directly to your project, often this will be next to your skin. So you want to keep that in mind. So let's take a look at the different the two differences too. You can see that they do look a little different. This one is braided and this one is knitted, knit. So you can see. 
but just always a quick test is to just give it a pull. And that leads me to my next um, recommendation. When it comes to, I'm going to go ahead and put my face on in the corner. When it comes to buying elastic, I am a big fan of buying it by the yard when able. Um, because that allows you to touch it, feel it, stretch it, um, and decide if it's right for your project. Um, when you buy it from the packages, uh, you can't always do that. So I am a big fan of buying it by the yard. Uh, most dealers uh, carry some form of elastic, so you can always check with them. There are quilt shops that even carry uh, different some of these different elastics. And of course, your... Um, your name brand stores will carry the elastics. Um, there's just a variety of places to get them from. But this is just a little sidebar soapbox. I am a big fan of contacting my dealer first. I like my dealer. I want my dealer to stay in business. So I always try to give my business to my dealer before I go anywhere else. Even if it's just a call, phone call. Hey, you got this? Okay, I'll be in. Um, so please try to support your dealers because... We like them. We want them around. They're built-in help and tech support. So we love that. All right. So everybody understand the difference between braided elastic and knit elastic? Because there will be a test. So I'm just going to let you know. I'm just kidding. All right. So we got braided elastic. We've got knit elastic. And then we have woven elastic. I'm going to move my camera for a minute. Ro woven elastic is also called ribbed elastic. It's also called non-roll elastic. Um, so like here you see that it, it almost has ribs like on a corset. So there's, there's ribbing in here and there's ribbing in here. But these are non-roll. They are very sturdy. They are not very soft. So these are ideal for your outerwear. So like if you're working with bottom weight fabrics, like if you want to make pants, they're great for bags. It's great for home deck. But this is not what you want to buy if you're working with pajamas or kids clothes or anything where you want something soft next to the body um, because this is not very soft, but it does have a purpose. So it's great for outerwear. Um, the knit is great for light to medium weights. It's great for pajamas. Um, it's just, it's soft against the skin. It's great for skirts, etc. Okay. So any questions about the non, the, the non roll woven, please. I like questions. I like comments. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. One of my next favorites is the fold over elastic. So fold over elastic, it looks like this. I plan to make my own panties using cotton knit. Which knit elastic would you recommend? I am getting to that. So I will definitely, that is included in my little list. So we will talk about that. I will also show you how you to attach it as well. So um, not to worry, we will get to that. But this is fold over elastic and it is identified with the little crease down the center. It has a shiny side and it has a matte side. There is no preference other than your own personal preference about which side comes out. And I am gonna be showing how to use this and um, I love this stuff. And then last but not least, to answer your question, we have the lingerie um, elastic. And this is what you will find on panties, on bras, on um, lingerie, uh, et cetera. Okay. So I am going to uh, go over that. There is also the clear elastic. Now, clear elastic is great if you want to reinforce uh, a seam. You will often find it in ready-to-made clo ready clothes, uh, especially knits, and you'll see it along the shoulders. 
because it keeps those shoulders from stretching out. Um, so that is what clear elastic is used for. All right. And then there are a couple that I do not have with me. Um, I kind of made one myself, so I'll show you uh, that a little bit. Um, but one of the threat the, that I do not have is the buttonhole elastic. Now, buttonhole elastic has various spots for buttons, and I'm going to talk about how to use that. That one I kind of made myself um, just because I'm out and I didn't get a chance to run to the store today. Uh, but um, when when I use it, I prefer to actually use the buttonhole fabric rather than what I'm doing today. Um, when it comes to swimsuits, there is a cotton rubber elastic. So it's a cotton rubber el uh, elastic. And that is what is highly recommended for swimsuits because having the rubber in it makes it resistant to the chlorine and the other chemicals that you can find in a pool where your traditional elastic can break down with those chemicals. The cotton rubber elastic does not. It holds up really well. So the question was, is that what you use in swimsuits as well? Um, in swimsuits, I use the cotton rubber elastic. Okay. And then there is elastic thread, which I'm also going to be showing. So elastic thread, this is also something that most dealers do carry. But elastic thread comes on a spool and it is elastic. So I'm going to show you how to use this um, as well. If we have time, I'm, you know, I'm always trying to get everything in. So, and then there is um, baby thread. I mean, baby elastic, which is very, very soft next to the skin. Um, oh, let me backtrack just one minute with the lingerie elastic. So if you are making uh, panties, underwear, bras, uh, lingerie, I highly, highly recommend the plush backed uh, elast Pico edged elastic because there's the generic Pico edge and then there's the plushed back and that is very nice against the skin. Rubber elastic is that cotton rubber elastic, and that is ideal for swimwear. Um, so questions are coming in. That's why you hear me repeating myself. Um, somebody asked, what about rubber elastic? Rubber elastic is uh, what I use when I use swimsuits. Okay. But um, uh, rubber elastic is also good for like if athletic wear that gets washed a whole ton. Um, Fold over is great for athletic wear. Uh, and then there is also a stretch thread. This is not elastic thread, um, but this is stretch thread. So you may want to check with your local dealer um, about carrying this. What stretch thread does is stretch thread stretches. So it allows you to do a straight stitch instead of a zigzag over elastic. We're going to play with this when we play with the fold over elastic. Um, because sometimes when you have something that's visible, you don't want to see that zigzag. Sometimes you do, but it's, um, it's nice to have the options. Okay. Any other questions about the elastics? Um, so we actually answered the rubber. We answered swimsuits, and we answered the top. What kind for Sophie's shorts? Can you just define what Sophie's shorts are? Uh, and as we put them in, I may answer your question without even knowing it. I've never really heard of Sophie's shorts. But here is a little outfit that I've made for my granddaughter. That still needs some little detail finishing touches. But this is a case of the casing. So this is a little, little shorts outfit that I made for my granddaughter. I still have thread hanging everywhere, so don't judge me. I just made it like 10 minutes, finished it 10 minutes before I got on the air. 
Um, and in the waste area here, there is a space for casing. So I described them as cotton shorts that cheerleaders wore or are worn for sports practice. So, all right, so I will show shearing um, and hopefully um, as I show the different techniques and different types of elastic, hopefully I will answer that um, Sophie shorts. Um, if not, I will um, come back to um, in the comments and try and, and answer it. But I will do my best to, to get to everything. Sequined elastic is, um, so yeah, somebody's mentioning sequined elastic. Sequined elastic is stretchy um, elastic that is covered in sequins. And that, you can use that for topical decoration. But that one's not going to be stitched like a traditional um, elastic the way we're going to be doing. Uh, that is more kind of just right on the edges. It's used a lot for belts. Um, it's it's used more for belts than for sewing. Uh, but it can be stitched down as well. But you're going to be right on the edges, maybe a little zigzag. Um, but to be honest with you, I've never actually stitched a uh, sequin elastic to anything. So I'm totally guessing here, but I know, I do know what it is. Um, but on this guy here, I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy in, right inside out. And on this guy, you can, when it comes to creating a casing, many of us know the traditional casings. of where you you fold over your your um waistband and stitch it up so i'm not going to go over that one because that one is the one most of us know so you press over your waistband you press a, a little hem you stitch it into place and then you thread your elastic through uh, that is kind of what is done here except in this case the casing, let me find my opening here. There we go. The casing is done in the seam allowance. So this one was stitched, like I said, I just literally just finished this uh, right before I went on air. So uh, please uh, forgive the little threads because I haven't had a chance to stitch them. But when this was stitched, uh, the waistband was stitched and I stitch down the tops and the bottoms here, which will allow for my thread to slide in. And this is another way that you can make casings for elastic. You can also, does anybody, when I talk about casing in elastic, um, does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Because I am kind of, moving along quickly through the casing elastic under the assumption that most of us have done some sort of casing elastic already. But if you haven't, if you are a new sewer or anything like that, please speak up and don't be afraid because somebody else is curious, but afraid to speak up. So please speak up um, because I will uh, review anything. But when it comes to uh, inserting elastic, I have bodkins, I have um, all these fancy tools, and I do like them. It's not that I don't like them, but I always have a safety pin around. So that always tends to be my go-to. And for threading this in, we're just going to thread our bodkin, our hooks, our safety pin, etc., And we will just run that in through. Please explain. All right. All right. 
right, I'm going to change my cam. Well, I'm going to have you on me so I can move my cameras around without making everybody seasick. Okay. This was hoping to have some more fabric handy, but I do not. All right. So bear with me. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I can talk about this. But let's pretend like this is the top of a pair of pants or the top of a skirt or something like that. We would fold over our waistband area and give it a press. And then we would stitch along the edge to make a casing. So a casing is now, when we put the elastic in, it is encased with the fabric. So we've encased the elastic, the, whatever we're putting here, whether it's a drawstring or elastic, we're encasing it. And that is what we're doing with the casing. And then we would feed our elastic through our casing. And we would then close it on the sides. So, okay. So this is what I mean by casing. So this is the real common one when I talk about waistbands. So waistbands of skirts, waistbands of shorts, pajamas, um, etc. You'll find the casing. A different kind of casing here is what we've done is I want... This is the little, it's inside out now, but this is the little short set, okay? But I want the elastic in the waist area, right? So I want this to scrunch up. So when I stitched the top and the shorts part together, I then came over and stitched along the edge here, and that leaves this, por this portion open. So that when I come, like I had to move my cameras and I don't know which one's where. So, all right, there we go. But now when I come in here, give myself some tape. Now when I come in here, I can feed my elastic through. And I've left an opening. So I've stitched the edge all the way around and then just left an opening, okay? So I would just continue to pull this around all the way through until I got all the way around and it would come out the other end and then I would close my ends and I'm gonna show you how to do those. All right, so any quest any more questions about that? Okay. So when it comes, another way that you can make a casing is with fabric. So if you had, so as you can see, I did serge quite a bit of this. And if I would have serged this seam, I would not have these nice seam allowances. So you can actually get fabric. Here's double double fold bias tape, etc. And you could stitch this down and treat it the same way. Are you guys understanding that? Remember, if you have a question, somebody else probably has a question, the same question. So please don't be shy about speaking up if I'm moving too fast or not explaining well. Okay. All righty, let me get back to me so I can get this out of the way. 
So now let's talk about some of the other ways to add elastic. When it comes to how much elastic do you need for your waist, that really is a comfort thing. So the rule of thumb is like two inches. So you take your waist or whoever's waist um, and subtract two inches from it. And that will be the length of the elastic uh, that you want to use. So here I am, you know, making a, an attachable waistband. So first let me show you what I'm doing. So again, my, my granddaughter is the benefit of this because these are quick little projects. So this is a pair of shorts. And instead of creating a casing here, this one is going to have a separate casing. Okay. So this has been so this fabric has been cut and then folded in half so this is going to be stitched on afterwards but i'm going to show you a really great trick when you do this kind of a thing so the first thing that i want to do is i'm going to go to my serger now i have got decorative or colored thread in here for you so what i'm going to be doing is taking these stitches out when i'm done so that i can put them back together for my granddaughter so i'm just going to go ahead and i'll show you what i'm doing i'm just going to stitch along the edge here Now this is just a four thread overlap. So whether you have a four thread or a five thread serger, this can be done, okay? If I were doing this on a regular sewing machine, I would just stitch my seam allowance and then just uh, whatever seam allowance it is. So I'm doing it on the serger uh, just because I started doing that way, but it can be done on a sewing machine with just a straight stitch and your seam allowance. So what I've done here is I've, the pattern actually called for two pieces and these would be stitched together and then folded in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add the elastic in as I go. And by doing that, what I'm going to do is create the casing with the elastic inside and then stitching that to uh, my project. And let me show you what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do here is I've, this is where it's going to fold over. So I'm going to go ahead and put my elastic here and I'm going to pin it in place just to hold on to it. And I'm going to come all the way down to the other end and I'm going to pin this side in place as well. Now this elastic is the size of my granddaughter's waist minus the two inches but the waistband is actually the size of the waist the of the pants so when you make pants you know that they're going to shrink in so what i've done here is this is going to create a little bit of pull right so when we put this together this is what it's going to look like okay so now I'm just going to bring my edges right sides together. And once again, this can be done on a sewing machine or on a serger. I just happen to be doing this on a serger. Okay. So are you with me? So this little guy is all messed up down here because my elastic is a different size than my waistband. But we're okay with that. We're just worrying about the edges now. So once again, this portion can also be done on a serger or on a sewing machine. 
And I am not going to sew over those pins. So let me change my view so you guys can see what's going to happen. I'm going to take my pins out. And I'm going to it Okay. So you see here where I've got the... So if you're on a sewing machine, you're just going to sew your seam. But you're going to have these tucked in uh, real quick. Right? And I'm going to go ahead and clip my thread. Now, when it comes to ending serger uh, seams, anything that's going to be caught in a cross seam, I'm just going to clip it right down. For those of you that have a serger, the only time I worry about tucking my ends in is if it ends to the public. But these are all going to be stitched down. But this is just one of those. I love doing this because it's just so easy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give that a fold over and get this all kind of ready for stitching. Okay. So you, re you, you see now that I have the kind of the fold over, I still have this going on, but as we stitch, we will stretch that out. So it's gonna be all stitched really, really easy and really, really fast. So now we're going to take the pants and when it comes to the pants, I personally like the big seam, which cause we have the elastic in there, the big seam towards the back. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if I can change my angle. All right. So I've got these to the back of the, to the back here. Actually, this only has, yeah, this only has the two seams. So this is going to the back. And you can pin it into place. And I'm going to come around to the front. And I'm going to pin this in place. And I know this one is because of the seams. If you have side seams, you'd line up the side seams. You do want to make sure that nothing's twisting. So to give that a pinch. And we just want to make sure, just a quick double check, that the elastic is not twisted in there. But is everybody with me? If you are a little insecure or um, new, Another thing that you could do is take your waistband and mark the quarter marks as well. So you'd bring your seams together and you'd put little marks in the quarter marks. So you'd have half side to side and half front to back. Everybody kind of get that? If not, I will show it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move to my serger. And I want to get my pin out of the way. I'm going to lift. I'm going to slide that in. Let me get my pin out of the way. For those of you that have sergers, do make sure you do not surge over your pins. They will kill your needle. All right. So what I'm going to do, the first thing is I'm just going to worry about the first couple of inches. So if you've pinned, you've got pins all the way around. And whenever I stop, I always stop with my needle in the fabric, whether on my serger or on my sewing machine, on my Husqvarna Viking sewing machine, because I want it to hold the spot. So now here we go. This is the fun part because I'm just going to grab my edges. And I'm going to stretch everything nice and even. And I'm just going to stitch along. So you'll see how fast and easy this is. So there's absolutely nothing wrong 
with making a casing, and there's many times I do that, but sometimes, especially when it comes to kids' kids' clothes, I will often cut off the the waist measurements on the pattern and just create another fabric with that. Where am I going? Come here, you. There you are. So as you can see, I'm stretching as I'm moving along because I need that waistband to fit here. And that means I'm going to have to stretch uh, the elastic. So see, now here is a case on the serger where this is going to face the public. So I'm going to give myself a tail because this one, I don't want to just trim off. This one, I would like to tuck it back in. But when you open it up and you flip it over, you see how you get this quick little... Quick little cute little waistband. So the question is, are you catching the elastic at the same time? On this one, I am not. So I have the elastic high enough in there. So my elastic is, my elastic ends right here. So I have enough space that I'm not catching the elastic. Now, if you want a little bit of more reinforcement to keep this from rolling, you can come along and that front seam and run a stitch in the ditch right down the center. Don't even need to back stitch, just run a stitch in the ditch, and that will prevent um, any possible twisting. But isn't that cute? So it's very quick, very easy, um, and very, very fun. So there are patterns that have the separate waist, waistband, but if you want to create your own, which is what I tend to do because I like this uh, technique a lot, um, is where it'll say on the pattern that you're going to fold over here and make your waist this, this much. So what I'll do is I'll cut that off right, right at that measurement. Um, and just don't forget to add a seam allowance on the pants where you cut it off and add the seam allowance on the little strip that you cut off. But that's how I end up changing uh, a folded waistband into a cased waistband. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. So I'm going to show you another way that you can do the elastic. with I have it here. There we go. Nope. So you're here. I just checked everything, right? Before here we go. I went live. Okay. So now I will catch the elastic. So what I'm doing here is in this case, what I've done is I've folded over my hem, or my case, not my hem, my casing. Now this is where they would want you to kind of press this up and uh, stitch it. I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is I tuck my elastic inside. Now this doesn't go all the way, but yours would. Um, and I'm going to stitch this at the same time. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right to the edge and I'm gonna fold this over. And when you put your pins in, a little kind of rule of thumb is to put the balls down, put the, put the points up and the balls down and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is all tucked up as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll this back. If you've ever done 
a blind hem before. This is very much the same. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back so that it's lining up with my elastic here. And this is why I put the pin with the pin up and the ball down is so that I could see these balls and be able to get them out of my way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get some stitching in right quick so that I can get my needles into my fabric and get my pin out of my way. And again, if you are on a sewing machine, this can be done. You're just going to be using a zigzag stitch here, and then you may wanna trim this off. Or if, you're, if you plan ahead, you can trim all this off first, or you can even create your own new way of doing it. So what I wanna do is I wanna to get to where my elastic is, my needles are in, the elastic and that will be holding it. Needle down, needle down is one of those features on a machine that, that I have to have. I am not interested in any machine that does not have a needle down because once you get used to putting that needle down, um, it's an extra hand for you. And that is what's happening in this case. Putting my needles into the fabric allows me to now have both hands free because it's my third hand and I can pull and manipulate on a sewing machine with the needle down. I can straighten things up and keep things organized. Um, so needle down, if you're looking at getting a new machine, uh, a new Husqvarna Viking, uh, make sure that you look for that needle down function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this as I stitch. And I'm going to give it a little pull. Now, when you see me giving a little pull on the back, I am not pulling the thread, the fabric through. I am pulling on the front and I'm pulling on the back with the same tension, but I am still letting my amber air do the work. So the amber air is what is pulling my fabric through. So I am shaving a little bit of the elastic off so that it creates this nice little casing. So this is another way that you can create a casing, a quick, easy casing for uh, your projects. Now to remind you, when you are stitching through the fabric or the elastic, you want to be sure that you are using a knit elastic and not a braided because the, the braided will lose the elasticity. Okay. So everybody kind of get that, how that works. Any questions so far? And if you ask me where I got the fabric, I cannot even remember. So um, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me go down first. So the non-roll, so the non-roll, I'm not really going to go over. The non-roll to remind you is um, the stuff with ribbing in it. It's the heavy duty because this one, you're going to use a casing. So you're going to do your traditional make your traditional casing and you're going to thread this in with your bodkin or your safety pin or whatever. But this one, you don't want to sew on. You don't want to, it's just, it's very thick. Um, so you just want to make sure that you do this sort of traditional. So I'm not going to go over that because we've kind of already um, done that. Okay. All right. How am I doing on time? Ooh, as always, I'm running out of time. All right. I am going to show you, I'm not going to show you the installation method of it, but I will show you buttonhole elastic. Um, because if you've never seen buttonhole elastic, it is usually about a three quarters of an inch wide to about a half inch wide. And it would have uh, buttonholes in it. It's exactly what it sounds. There's little buttonholes in it. And they take about a half inch button. Now, what makes this so cool 
is if you've got growing kids um, and you want to make something a little larger than what they currently wear uh, or a little, you can adjust. And let me show you what I mean. So this is what I'm talking about where I didn't have the buttonhole elastic. So I kind of made my own. Um, I don't want, um, but when I do it for real, I use the buttonhole elastic. I just happen to be out. But the buttonhole elastic will have buttonholes here. I just cut one. So, you know, that was a hack job. But they will have little buttonholes in here. And when I create my casing, instead of leaving an opening, before I fold it over and top stitch it, I will put buttonholes in the size, the, the length of my elastic that I've gotten. Okay. I had to go with the wide, but normally it's about a half inch. And then you can put buttons on the back of the project. So as they're growing, right? So he may have, be at this buttonhole for now, but as he's growing, you can actually move the buttonhole over. So the waist will will grow with them. It's also great if you have uh, maternity pants or anything like that, or if you are a costumer that has to make um, something that's going to fit a variety of sizes. The buttonhole elastic is a great um, a great alternative. It makes for quick and easy alterations. So you can do it even on, you can add the buttonhole elastic to like jeans and stuff like that. If you need a little extra snugness, you can just stitch it in and move it on over. Um, it's great. When you use the woven to make that casing, do you still use the same rule of thumb waist measurement plus two inches? Yes. So normally, if in doubt, that is what you do. Now, for me, um, what I do, because my my waist ratio is a lot different than my hip ratio, which is a lot larger, um, is I actually will take my elastic and just stretch it right over my hips because I need to make sure I can get them on and off. And that is my measurement. So well, how it sits on my waist, I no longer worry about. I just need to be able to get up and down over my waist. I mean, my hips. So it will be different for you. If you're making something for yourself, it's a lot easier because you can put the waist, the elastic around your waist and snug it up until you're comfortable. Um, so if you're cutting off your circulation, that's too tight. Um, when it comes to kids, um, I do try to get moms and dads to measure them. So like my grandkids, I do try to have mom measure their height and their waist. Um, periodically, like, you know, once every six months or so, because they grow so fast. Um, as they get older, I'll need more measurements. But for right now, when they're, you know, the five-year-old age, that's really all I need is the waist and the height. So um, you can get their waistbands that way. Um, does that answer that question? Okay. All right. I want to talk a little bit about the elastic... Um, the fold over elastic. Now I'm going to do this in two pieces because I've got lots of little pieces, but nothing really, really big. So uh, if I were going to do this for real, I would do it. I would go get it by the yard. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to show a little t-shirt here. Um, I'm just going to show sew up my, my uh, side thing. And we're going to pretend like this is a full t-shirt. Okay. So we're going to pretend like this. I'm sorry. I'm not talking to you. So we're going to pretend like this is a full t-shirt. And what I'm looking at is one of those spaghetti straps. So this is the side where um, my arm would go. And this would be my neckline. And this would be where you'd add like the spaghetti straps. But this is awesome, an uh, awesome place for the fold over elastic. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and put in my elastic thread. So the elastic thread, it actually has some stretch to it. So it, I mean, this is stretch thread, I apologize. This is stretch thread, 
not elastic thread, but it has some stretch to it. So normally I would put it in my bobbin as well, um, but I forgot to wind a bobbin, so I will show you. And when I put this kind of thread in my bobbin, um, I wind it, I turn the speed super slow, and I do not put it through the tension guide. I just want a straight thread. I don't want any tension on it. I don't want it stretching, um, anything like that. But this will just work just like regular thread. But what this does is this allows me to, this allows me to um, sew a straight stitch when I'm working with stretch. I know, I know, I'm running out of time, I know. My watch is letting me know I'm running out of time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is this, this would be the, 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 my arm pole, and this would be my neckline. So what I would do is I would just go across the entire neckline. And this, like I said, this, I'm showing you this little thing, but this fold over elastic, can be used on wovens if you want just a decorative edge. It's great for um, knits. It's great for embellishment. It's just great. So what we'll do is we'll just fold this over. And there is that little crease in there. And that's my guide. Now this one I don't tend to pin. I'm just going to fold it over and stitch it. And I could I could talk for another hour about this stuff. I'm gonna put my thread in. I mean my needle in. Sorry, it's gonna make a difference. And it does sometimes want a little help getting those first few stitches. So I just There we go. Come on. Come on. You can do it. There you go. But what is cool about this is so I just kind of come and fold over as I go. And I'm only working a couple of inches at a time. It's fighting with the bobbin thread. It works so much nicer when you have the same thread in the top and in the bobbin. Yeah. All right, so I guess I'm not going to be showing you that because it's really not happy. It's fighting with the, the straight thread as well as the, the other thread. But you see how it has some stretch? to it and it's not going to pop your stitches. All right. But what I wanted to show you and I'm really re what was that Meredith? Uh yes, I am using a stretch needle. Okay. But what I would do here is I would do the same thing around here, but when I when I cross over here is I would just continue up and around. And what this would do is this will make a nice little strap as well. So like for a little t-shirt. Yes, you can use fold over elastic on um, panties as well. But you may want to give it a feel. Um, like the shiny side is not what I would have next to my skin. The matte side is much softer. So that's what I would have next to my skin. Some fold over is metallic, so you want to be careful because that is extremely scratchy next to the skin. Um, so, but yes, it most definitely can. And if you use the stretch thread, you can get away without uh, using a, uh, a zigzag stitch. So I personally like that because I often want a straight stitch instead of a zigzag stitch. Okay. I've got too much more to show you. 
I do want to show the, um, because I specifically said I would, so I want to make sure I get to uh, the lingerie. Uh, so the lingerie and uh, your knit elastics can all be done this way. Um, and I do want to try and get the shearing as well. But all so when it comes to the the lingerie elastic or the um even the wider elastics as long as it's the knit elastic it can also be stitched down exactly the same way um so that when it's when it's stitched and flipped this would be next to your body you'll find them in like uh you know um Like men's shorts, what are those called? Uh, jockeys and stuff like that, where the elastic is right next to the body. So this is done the same way, and it's also the way you would do it if you have a decorative elastic. If you wanted to do um, th this, so what tension do you use when you're when sewing? So one of the things that if you have a Husqvarna Viking. Um, if you have a Who's Friend of Viking electronic machine, we have these nice little sewing advisors. So we actually have the sewing advisor. You come in here and you tell it what you're working with and it will set your tensions and your stitch lengths and all of that stuff for you. So a stretch light is what kind of what you'd be doing if you were lingerie or bathing suits or stuff like that. Um, for like t-shirts and stuff, I always like kind of hover around the medium. And my tension is at 4.6. So that's the, the tension, and it's giving me a stitch length of 2.5. And um, it's recommending a stretch needle. And it's recommending a stretch needle. So what kind of elastic is this? This is lingerie elastic. So it's designed for pants, panties, bras, etc. So, but I did uh, mention that I would talk about how to uh, put that on. And I still do want to talk about shearing a little bit. So when it comes uh, to adding the elastic, we're going to be stitching it to the right sides. So what you have to think about when you buy the extra plush, we want the plush side up because when it's flipped over, we want the plush side next to our skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and serge. Now, if you were on a regular sewing machine, we would go ahead and um, do a zigzag on this. But because I'm on a serger, serger has stretch in this built into the stitches. So I don't need to worry about that. Now, when I'm doing this, you do want to stretch your elastic just a little bit. So you don't want to do the death stretch, but you do want to make sure that you stretch your elastic a little bit so that it will create, create that gather. And I'm not doing a very good job. All right. But you see how we'll get that a little, a little um, stitch along the X. And this is where I said I'm not doing a very good job because I wasn't paying attention. But you want to stitch it right along the edge. And then you can come and fold this over. And then you will need to top stitch it. So you'll either want to use the stretch fabric or the stretch thread. Or um, you can use a twin needle. And you could, or you could use a cover hem if you have a cover hem machine. Uh, so if you have the Amber Air 600 or if you have the S25, um, I don't know. I, I, I've never tried to do a blind hem. What a blind hem fold is going to do is going to, it's going to pull this back and have me stitch here. So um, I, I, I don't know. It seems like an awful lot of work. But I would use either a, a twin needle on your Husqvarna Viking machine or a cover stitch or 
a zigzag, but you need to have some stretch when it comes to this. If you're using the stretch thread, you could do that as well. Now, when it comes to purchasing a twin needle, I don't happen to have a knit twin needle here, but when you purchase a twin needle, this particular uh, number here with the comma in between is how far apart those tines are. And the red is signifying that it's for woven and the blue, so the ones you want are the blue, is for knit. Um, and I always try, I always kind of remember that is I wear cottons in the summer when it's hot and that's red and I wear fleece in the winter when it's cold and that's knit. So that's kind of how I always remember that. Um, no, uh, so the sort of like the casing earlier, no, not really because this is being stitched directly to the fabric. There's no blind hem fold over. It's right along the edge of the fabric. So here's the edge of my fabric and my elastic is right on top. So I just stitch those together. There's no folding until afterwards when I come and I fold that backwards. Okay, so does that, does that help clear that up? All right, I wanna talk really, 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 really quickly about the shearing because I know we're out of time. Um, but when I'm not talking to you, my watch keeps talking to me. Um, when I use elastic thread, I'm going to wind my bobbin by hand. So you want to make sure that when you are working with elastic thread, do not try and bobbin wind it. It will wind it too tight and it will lose the look you want. And I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, my cotton, my uh, regular thread back on. Let me just pull my thread out. Okay, you can stretch that out. You are hiding. There you are. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my. I'm going to go ahead and put my hand wound elastic thread in here. Oh crap, I did it the wrong way. I wound it the wrong way. Let me get a little bit on. Um, it's doing a lot of things at once. So let me let me just wind some some on real quick. You do want to pay attention when you're winding it on to make sure that you wind it on the right way. And don't be like the teacher who wound it on the wrong way. I'll just do this as fast as I can. A couple yards, that's all I need. So I don't have very much, but I'll be able to show you. So when you wind it on, you want the, that's why I was able to take one look at it and know I had did it the wrong way. Um, you want to make sure that you have the little Who's Corner Viking logo on the top of the bobbin. And when it comes off, you need to be able to creating that little letter P. So when I wound it, I just had my bobbin upside down. And we're going to go ahead and put this in. And we are going to put it into our little tension guide. Just like we would if um, we had any other thread in here. The only difference is I am actually going to manually pull this up because I need a tail. And if I don't, 
if I use the cutter, the traditional way, it cuts it too short, it pulls a little bit, and then it'll suck it back in because it's got some stretch. Now I'm going to use my laser guidance system, but normally what I would do is I would mark my fabric. Um, so if you don't have the laser guidance system, you want to make sure that you're marking your fabric to create shearing. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. So I, you would put your rows of markings on here and then just sit, uh, stitch down the, the various sizes. And you will see the shearing happen behind me. And when you add rows, it shears more and more and more. Oops, I did it. I did exactly what I told you not to do. This is exactly what I told you not to do. I didn't leave a long enough tail, so it didn't create, it didn't pull up until the very end. But as you can see, it does create this shearing that's going on. Now, if you want, and I know it, you can't really see it, but as you start adding more and more rows, it does gather in a bit more. But if you want this to be tighter, what you can use is your specialty bobbin case. And on the specialty bobbin case, you can tighten up the tension on the lower bobbin. You do not want to touch, touch the tension on your basic bobbin case here. If you want to play with your tension, you're going to get the specialty bobbin case for your machine, whether it, no matter which one it is, and you can tighten your tension there. And that will create a little more, a little more gathering here. So am I understanding this correctly? In my Husqvarna Viking uh, Designer SC, I use elastic thread on top and I can use an elastic thread in the bobbin, wind it by hand. You cannot use the elastic thread in the needle because it's too thick to go through the needle. So it's just in the bobbin and I have all purpose sewing thread on the top. So the, the stretch is being created by the, the elastic thread on the bobbin. See that? Okay, any other, so what size uh, elastic, so what size needle do you use with elastic thread? Um, with elastic thread, it's just thread. You can use any size needle. You're gonna choose the size of the needle uh, uh, for your project. So if you're working, adding elastic to a heavyweight woven, or you're going to be stitching through the elastic, I would use a larger needle. Um, so like a 80 or a 90. Whereas if you're going to be sewing like lingerie, I may use like a 60-10 or a 75-11 um, because I want finer holes. So swimsuits, um, stuff like that, I want the finer needle. And the heavier duty, um, Basically, the adage is the bigger the fabric, the bigger the needle. But you do want to make sure that you're using a stretch needle. or So stretch, ballpoint, or jersey, they're all very similar. Um, but yeah, the bigger the needle, the, big, the bigger the fabric, the bigger the needle. So if you're working on fine fabrics, uh, you're going to use a, a finer needle, smaller needle. And heavy-duty fabrics like home decks and stuff, you're going to use a bigger needle. So like a 90. Um, and then everywhere in between. So what size stitch length did you use for the shearing? I just did the two and a half um, that was built into the machine. And normally I do switch out my bobbin case because I like it a little tighter and I use my specialty bobbin case and tighten up my um, tension just a bit uh, so that it, it pulls a little bit as it's going. Um, are there any other questions?
So if you have further questions, um, so if you have further questions, go ahead and type them into the comments and I will pop by uh, over the next couple of weeks and make sure I answer them. So I'll, I'll be by later today and tomorrow and the next day. Um, and even after I stop checking it, my behind the scenes crew, Meredith, Thomas and Ryan, they are always checking it and they let me know when new questions come up. So uh, you're not forgotten. Um, and I would like to write, remind everybody of the next MySonet Live. Um, the next Husqvarna Viking MySonet Live is on May 18th at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, going over 3D techniques, uh, creating 3D flowers, butterflies, and other creatures in sewing, free motion, and embroidery. And if you know Karen Charles, you know that she's very artistic, so you do not want to miss it. Um, cause she is just a plethora of design ideas. And the next my so net, uh, Facebook is on, uh, May 11th at 2 PM central, 3 PM Eastern. And for those of you that have either platinum or premier plus two or, um, uh, the new my so net, uh, we're going to be talking about how to import fonts from embroidery. Um, if you don't know what that is, be sure to check it out because it is very, very cool and you'll be so glad that you did. So that is going to be May 11th. Uh, one final question. Does the specialty bobbin case from the diamond work on the Epic 2? Um, it does not. The reason is on the, the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic, uh, Designer Epic 2, the Epic 95Q and the Epic 980Q have a a bobbin that is 30% larger. So it does not fit uh, from the um, the diamond to the Epic and that's why. So regarding the fold over elastic, elastic thread on top and regular thread in the bobbin. No, I usually use the elastic, the, the elastic, th the stretch thread in both the top and the bobbin. When winding a bobbin with that stretch thread, however, I bypass the tension disc. So the tension is on this machine, on the, the Designer Epic 2, it's over here. Sometimes you'll see it more over there, but it's this little tension guide and you need to thread regular thread in the tension guide, guide to go to the bobbin. When I use that stretch elastic, I bypass that. I'm not using that because I don't want to stretch the stretch thread. When you did the shearing, did you stretch the fabric on the subsequent rows? Um, no, I just kind of stitch it. If the uh, so, it, the question is: When the shearing did, when you did the shearing, did you stretch the fabric on the su subsequent rows, or did you just stitch with the previous puckering? Yes, I just kind of keep on going, and I'm not really manipulating my fabric much at all, unless it gets to a point like I was doing one where I had quite a bit of shearing. And at that point, it was just kind of getting in my way, but I still wasn't stretching it. I was just really manhandling the, the, uh, the, 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 the shirt stuff so that it was just really out of my way. So I really kind of let the machine do the, the puckering portion. All right. So any other questions? I want to thank you all for coming. I really appreciate you hanging out. I know I went over and I apologize for that. But I look forward to seeing you next time. And I want to thank you again for coming. And uh, I hope you learned something. And I will be checking in on the comments. And I will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.